In today's episode, we're out here taking a look at the all-new 2017 Ford Super Duty. This particular model is an F250, but we'll also be talking about the F350 and the F450. The F450 is what makes the Ford Super Duty lineup a little bit different than the Chevy Silverado or the Ram series of pickup trucks. Some people get a little bit confused about where the F350 and F450 differ. Perhaps the most simplistic way to divide the difference between the two is that the F350 is the maximum payload version and the F450 is the maximum tow version. Separating those two models out is a little bit different than what we see in the General Motors or in the Chrysler pickup trucks. And so in a way, the F450 and F350 both compete with the Ram 3500 and the Chevy Silverado 3500, although in many ways Ford Super Duty and the Ram 2500 and Ram 3500 are the two vehicles that are really fighting a tough battle in this segment. Both manufacturers have really been pushing the envelope hard when it comes to towing capability, payload capability, and of course, their enormous diesel engines that are under the hood. We have nearly 1,000 pound-feet of torque out of this 6.7 liter V8 engine. Of course, the real news for the Super Duty lineup isn't the insane amount of torque available out of the diesel engine. It actually is the fact that, like the F-150, this has an all-aluminum body. The aluminum body and a brand new steel frame that is 24% stiffer than the 2016 Super Duty helps make this vehicle about 350 pounds lighter than a comparable 2016 model. Some of you might be wondering why saving weight in a pickup truck is important, but if you think about it, the more weight you take out of the truck itself, the more weight the truck can haul and the more weight you can put back in the truck in terms of payload and in terms of amenities inside the cabin. That's why the weight savings in the Super Duty is not quite as large as the weight savings that we saw in the F-150 because Ford has put some of the weight right back into the vehicle in terms of more creature comforts in the cabin, comfier seats, etc., while still saving weight and improving fuel economy. Up front, the Super Duty series is still instantly recognizable as a Ford pickup truck. We have this extraordinarily large Ford logo right here, strong chrome bars running right across the side, and these very large headlamps that curve around on either side of the grille. Super Duty is still, of course, stamped right there on the top of the hood. Our model has these large chrome tow hooks, and we have fog lamps up front as well. Underneath that Ford logo, we find a camera because a 360-degree camera system is now available. Just like the competition, the Super Duty starts out with a two-door cab and an eight-foot bed, but the model we're taking a look at right here is the crew cab and the shorter bed. As with the competition, your towing and payload capability will vary based on a number of things, like your bed selection, your cab selection, and of course, the engine that you choose under the hood. Like the front of the truck, the back of the truck is instantly recognizable as a Ford. We have these C-shaped tail lamps yet again, large Ford logo right here in the middle. The aluminum construction really helps out when it comes to the overall weight of the tailgate, even though this is not counterbalanced like some of the Japanese trucks out there. Since our model is equipped with the multi-camera system, we actually have two different cameras right there on the tailgate. Ours is equipped with the tow hitch receiver from the factory. We also have well-integrated parking sensors in the back, as well as a 7-pin and a 4-pin wiring harness. For 2017, the base engine is a 6.2-liter gasoline V8 engine, producing 385 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. The next step up from there is this 6.7-liter turbo diesel engine that produces 440 horsepower and a maximum of 925 pound-feet of torque. Both of those engines are mated to a six-speed automatic transmission and your choice of either rear-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. If you get the chassis cab version of the Super Duty, then we still get a 6.8-liter V10 engine or a slightly detuned version of this same diesel. That cuts power down to 330 horsepower and torque down to 750. You'll notice that most Super Duty pickup trucks don't have an EPA fuel economy estimate, and that's because like most heavy-duty pickup trucks in America, the weight of the vehicle is over a particular threshold, so they don't actually have to get rated. As I said before, towing and payload vary a great deal depending on the model and the options that you get. But the days of a three-quarter ton pickup truck being able to handle three quarters of a ton in the bed and a one-ton pickup truck being good for about 2,000 pounds in the bed are long over because this F-250 that we're driving can handle about one full ton in the bed. That's this model's rated payload capacity, and it varies between about 2,400 pounds and 4,200 pounds depending on the model and the options that you get. As with most pickup trucks, the larger the cab you get, the more options that you get, and whether or not you get four-wheel drive, those things do cut down your payload capacity. So again, the model that we're driving right here is right around 2,000 pounds. About 2,000 pounds of payload capacity in this vehicle may sound less impressive than that top-end 4,200 pound number, but the important thing to keep in mind is that the new Super Duty compared to the Silverado or the Ram has a high payload capacity all the way across the board when you're comparably equipping it. So if you were to equip a Ram 2500 with the same kind of options that we have in this F-250, its payload would be notably lower. That's thanks not only to the lightweight construction of the Super Duty line in general, but also Ford's dedication to having insane payload capacities. 
you can put a maximum of 7,630 pounds in the bed of the pickup truck if it's properly equipped. And of course, if you get the F450, then you could tow 32,500 pounds, again, when properly equipped. That's just a little bit higher than the Ram 3500. Front seat comfort is excellent in the Super Duty. We're driving an F250 that's sort of a mid-level trim, so we have a two-way adjustable lumbar support, a tilt telescopic steering column that is manual but has a decent range of motion, and we also have adjustable pedals. Depending on the trim and the options that you select, you can also get a four-way adjustable lumbar support, and there is available seat massage, which is a very unique feature in the Ford lineup. The Ford massage system doesn't just adjust air bladders in the seat back, it also adjusts bladders in the seat bottom cushion. So for long highway drives, especially if you're towing something for very long distances, it makes the seat much more comfortable because it helps improve leg circulation. That's definitely an option that I would select if it's available in the trim that you're shopping for. As you'd expect from a large pickup truck, the rear seats are cavernous. I have a solid uh, 14 inches or so of leg room between this front seat adjusted for me and my legs right back here in the rear seat. I also have a very large amount of headroom, probably about four inches or so. The middle seat is a little bit less comfortable than the outboard seats, but this is the kind of vehicle that is designed for five or six passengers because this is very wide, so you could very easily fit six adults in this vehicle. The rear seats feature a center armrest with pop-out cup holders, and the bench lifts up and out of the way so you can put cargo right down here on the floor. With those seats lifted up and out of the way, we have a nearly flat load floor, or you can pop this divider system up and latch it into place. And then we have a storage compartment that is lockable from the cabin. You can actually insert the key in this little slot right here, and it'll keep that seat bottom cushion from lifting up. The model that we're driving is a Lariat, so we don't have a sunroof, but we do have height adjustable seat belts, the leather interior, and these seats are both heated and ventilated. The overall design of the interior is somewhat similar to the last generation Super Duty, so we still have this swoop to the window line right here. It gives you a little bit better view of those side view mirrors than if we had a door that went straight across. The armrest portion of the door is made from a soft touch material, while the rest is a hard touch plastic. We have faux wood trim right there. There are a variety of different storage compartments, the small one right here by the door handle, and then much larger ones there towards the bottom of the door by the speaker grills. The upper portion of the dashboard is a soft touch injection molded material. Then we have two glove compartments below that. You can easily put smartphones like an iPhone 7 Plus right there inside and close the lid. The cord does get a little bit pinched, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then below that, we have a larger bin style glove compartment with a slot for the instruction manual. In our model, we have a center channel speaker and a storage cubby right there above the infotainment system. Again, just about the right size for an iPhone 7 Plus. Below that, we have the latest Ford Sync 3 infotainment system. Between the infotainment system and that storage cubby, we find the button for the exhaust brake, the trash control, hazard lights, hill descent control, and the 360 degree camera system. The all around camera certainly makes it easier to park a large truck like this. That's also an option that I would strongly recommend if you're shopping for a truck. Below the infotainment system, we have the controls for the four wheel drive system. Ours has the two speed transfer case and the locking rear differential. Pull that knob right there for the locking rear diff. Controls for that infotainment system, some direct access buttons, two presets, track forward, backward, a media button. And then on the passenger side, we have a 12 volt power port and a 400 watt inverter outlet. You'll find the integrated trailer brake controller just below the four wheel drive controls, and then the controls for the dual zone climate control to the right of that. We still have a single slot optical displayer between the controls for the SYNC 3 system and those climate controls. At the bottom of the stack, we have two USB inputs, a 12 volt power port, and a very small storage cubby. The instrument cluster is one of Ford's latest partial LCD clusters. We have a physical tachometer on the left and a physical speedometer on the right, and everything else is this large central LCD. In addition to those extra gauges on the top, this is also where you'll find your fuel economy, fuel history, navigation and compass, truck specific gauges, like a larger turbo boost gauge, transmission temperature, the diesel exhaust fluid level, tire pressure readouts, a digital speedometer, status on diesel exhaust fluid, engine hours, idle hours, and oil temperature. And then there's some towing specific gauges that help you in your trailer setup. You can also check the trailer tire pressure if you have the appropriate monitors in your trailer's tires. There's an off-road screen that gives you inclination as well as what the four-wheel drive system is doing. So if I were to, for instance, activate the four-wheel drive system, move it into four high, you'll notice that icon changed. And then if I were to engage the rear differential lock, you'll notice that icon changes yet again in the middle. The steering wheel is a four-spoke design. You'll find the controls for that multifunction display over here on the left, along with the controls for the cruise control. On the right side, we have our infotainment controls with a mute button, track forward, backward. The right side of the wheel is where we find the infotainment controls, mode selection, track forward, backward, mute, voice command, and some dedicated phone buttons. Pickup trucks are some of the few two-row six-passenger vehicles we have left in America. 
We have a seat bottom cushion that flips open to reveal a storage compartment where we can also store this cup holder that latches right into place there in front of that seat bottom cushion so we can have the seat bottom cushion in place and still have those cup holders right there. In addition to that, if we fold the center seat down, we have some additional cup holders, a slot right here where you can yet again just about fit a smartphone and a softly padded center armrest that opens to reveal some additional storage area where you can very easily put wallets, smartphones, that sort of thing inside. Acceleration times are a tricky thing to talk about with pickup trucks, especially heavy duty pickup trucks, because there are two different engines available in the F-250, a variety of different rear axle ratios, and of course, a variety of different cab and bed sizes, and those will all affect your zero to 60 time. However, the diesel model that we're driving right here, when empty, went from zero to 60 in 7.5 seconds, which is very respectable for a diesel full-size three-quarter ton pickup truck. We've scored relatively similar zero to 60 times in diesel versions of the competition, whether that's from Ram or from Nissan in their Titan XD. Keeping in mind that this F-250 has the turbo diesel engine, which is heavier than the V8 gasoline engine, and of course we have the large cab, we went from 60 miles an hour to zero in a fairly impressive 137 feet. That's a few feet shorter than the stopping distances we recently recorded in the Ram 2500 or in the Nissan Titan XD. In terms of overall on the road feel, this is obviously a pickup truck, but it actually ends up feeling a little bit more engaging than some of the other large pickup trucks out there, most notably the Titan XD. And that's a little bit interesting because the Nissan Titan slots generally somewhere between the F-250 and the F-150. However, it has a very big truck feel to it out on the road. The steering is ponderous and that's not what we see in this F-250. We actually get a little bit of steering feedback coming from the front end of the vehicle, although again this is still a very large truck. Compared to the F-150, the F-250 certainly feels like a large vehicle out on the road and that just goes to the next level if you get the F-350 or the F-450. Ride quality is an area where certain trims of the Ram 2500 do excel over the F-250 or the Silverado. That's because the Ram 2500 is available with an optional rear air suspension. The optional rear air suspension is a little bit different than the air suspension that we find in the Ram 1500 though, because it's primarily designed for load leveling. This F-250 on the other hand has a rear suspension that is a pretty standard design. It's designed for heavy duty payload and heavy duty towing. And that just means that if you're running around with your bed empty like we are at this moment, then the ride is going to feel extra firm. Overall, I'm gonna give this particular model a B minus when it comes to the ride score. The suspension of the Silverado is just a little bit softer and the Ram 2500 with the optional air suspension is even more compliant than these models. Obviously, this traditional rear suspension is going to cost a little bit less to maintain in the long run than an optional air suspension. The cabin noise score in this Lariat trim F-250 was very impressive, even with the diesel engine under the hood. We scored 71 decibels at 50 miles an hour, which makes this one of the quietest full-size pickup trucks that we've tested. Fuel economy is very difficult to talk about with pickup trucks because, of course, your fuel economy will vary based on what you're hauling, what you're towing, and which engine you choose under the hood. During our week with the F-250, we spent about half the time, that's about 200 miles or so, with the bed filled to maximum capacity. The payload in this particular trim is just over 1,900 pounds, just under 2,000 pounds, so we had about 1,800 pounds of cargo back there, and of course, me right here in the driver's seat. We of course also performed some test towing runs with a 7,000 pound trailer connected, and our overall fuel economy average has been around 12.5 miles per gallon. Again, we are driving the diesel model. Some people may think that 12.5 miles per gallon is a poor fuel economy score, but again, keep in mind we are driving a very large pickup truck with a high payload capacity and a high towing capacity. When it comes to overall fuel economy, I'm going to give this particular model a B. Obviously, if you're after high fuel economy in a pickup truck, you should not be shopping in the three-quarter ton or one ton segments. We did get slightly better fuel economy in the Nissan Titan XD, but it's not quite the same thing as the Ford F-250. It slots, again, somewhere between the F-250 and the F-150. The Super Duty series of pickup trucks, just like the Silverado HD or the Ram 2500 and 3500, are very heavy pickup trucks. You need a beefy frame in order to be able to carry the kind of payloads and do the kind of towing that these vehicles are capable of. You also need a fairly beefy frame to be able to support a very large 6.7 liter turbo diesel under the hood. Curb weight is quite logically the enemy when it comes to fuel economy, and even though we have the aluminum body in this F-250, Ford's mission was a little bit split between trying to improve fuel economy a little bit in the new F-250, but also trying to improve payload and towing ability. While some car companies out there are deliberately using lighter weight materials, lighter weight construction methods in order to improve acceleration, improve handling, improve fuel economy, etc., in the pickup truck line, it's definitely more cargo focused. Although the optional air suspension in the Ram pickup trucks does give it a better ride than the F-250, 
Overall, the Ford is actually my choice for on-the-road dynamics. This feels a little bit better put together, a little bit more solid. It also feels a little bit more nimble. And I realize we're kind of splitting hairs here because calling a vehicle this large nimble is definitely a relative assessment. So don't try and compare this to your average midsize sedan or average hatchback or anything like that. But as far as large pickup trucks go, this is actually more pleasing to drive out on the road than the Titan, than the Ram, or the Silverado. Pickup truck pricing is pretty difficult to talk about because there are so many different options and ways you can configure your Super Duty. So you notice that our pricing chart looks a little bit different. The least expensive Super Duty would be the Ford F-250 with the base gasoline engine and that would set you back $32,535 starting. If you want the diesel engine in your Super Duty, the least expensive version of that would be $41,330 for the F-250 turbo diesel. And if you want the most expensive F-250, that would set you back around $78,000 for the top-end Platinum model. I suspect many shoppers out there will be looking at something like a nicely configured F-250 in the XLT trim. We have that specced out at $48,395 that includes the diesel engine, the super cab, and the 8-foot bed. An interesting thing that you'll note about three quarter ton and one ton pickup trucks is that the price ranges end up being somewhat similar. So the F-250 starts at $32,535, but an F-350 is not that much more expensive at $33,705. Top end configurations of the three quarter ton and one ton Ford trucks also end up being relatively similar, about $82,000 for the top end F-350, even though it has the dual rear wheel option. Ford's F450 is really kind of an interesting entry in this segment because it's not exactly a medium duty truck, but it's not exactly the typical heavy duty pickup truck that we see from Ram or from Chevy either. The F450 really is the towing focused model of the Super Duty lineup. Obviously the Ford F250 and F350 have very high towing ratings, and indeed the F350's tow rating is not that much lower than the F450, but the F450 really is all about towing. It has the heavier duty axle, it has a wider front track, and those two things together improve the towing ability of the vehicle. And I'm not just talking about the ability to actually pull something heavy, but the way the vehicle feels while it's towing. It's gonna be superior in the F450 than the F350 with heavier loads. And that's exactly why the F450 is not available in the same shorter wheelbases. You'll notice that all the F450 models are quite large. The extra towing ability in the F450 will set you back some additional cash. It starts at $53,945, the highest starting price in the Super Duty lineup. Of course, keep in mind that the F450 comes only in that one form, and that's exactly why the starting price is a little bit higher. Because when we take a look at the top end price of the F450, it tops out at just about $3,000 more than the F350. Depending on how you configure your F350 and F450, the Delta could be between about $2,000 and $3,000. Parallels to the F450 with the competition are a little bit tricky. You could in some ways say that the top end Ram 3500 would be a competitor to the F450, but we're really only talking about the towing and payload capacities of the Ram 3500 in that top end configuration. FCA does not make the same kind of structural changes to the top end 3500 that we see when we transition from the F350 to the F450. Now we should talk about pros and cons. Obviously the biggest pro for the F250, F350, and F450 are the high payload and high towing capacities across the line. That's made possible partly by the aluminum construction of the pickup truck, but also because Ford has a serious dedication to high payload capacity especially. You will find consistently higher payload capacities in the Super Duty lineup when you compare it to comparable Silverado or Ram pickup truck models. Obviously when you're comparing one truck to another, comparably equipping them is essential because there are so many different options that it'd be very easy to find a Ram 2500 with a high payload capacity versus a Ford F250 but when you comparably equip those vehicles, the F-250 will beat the Ram 2500 or the Silverado 2500. Same thing goes for the one ton and of course the F-450. There are also an incredible amount of available options. And this is not something that we see just in the Ford lineup, but also from General Motors and of course from FCA. The number of available options and features is definitely a pro for the Ford F-250, F-350 and F-450. Although we see a great deal of options available in the Ram and the GM pickup trucks, they don't take it to quite the same level that Ford does. Now let's talk about the cons. The aluminum body is sort of a pro and a con because the aluminum body is the way that Ford has given us better fuel economy in the new Super Duty lineup, better payload, better towing capacities, and of course, more features in the cabin for relatively the same curb weight. 
There are also cases where aluminum will behave differently when it starts to encounter resistance. So if you're really rough on the bed of your pickup truck, if you bash into a pole, etc., aluminum will deform or break differently than steel, and that may end up being more expensive to repair or replace, at least in the short term. We don't really know what long-term repair costs will be like on aluminum because that cost is continuing to come down. More and more manufacturers are using aluminum parts in their vehicles, aluminum body panels, etc. So more companies out there are familiar with repairing aluminum than they were before. I'm also going to put price on the con side, but this is something that applies to all three quarter ton and one ton pickup trucks. As manufacturers have been fighting each other over which pickup truck can tow the most, haul the most, which one has the most powerful engine, they have made their pickup trucks more expensive than before. And that means that the F-250, the Ram 2500, the Silverado 2500, they're less attainable in some ways than they have been in the past. The reality is that if you were a three quarter ton pickup truck shopper 20 years ago, and now you're looking to replace your 20 year old pickup truck, you might find that an F-150, a Ram 1500, or a Silverado 1500 would suit you just fine, even though back when you bought your last pickup truck, you actually needed a three quarter ton truck. Now let's move on to comparisons. First up, we have the Ram 2500 and Ram 3500. The MSRP on the Ram 2500 is a little bit below the F250, and you're likely to find a better deal on it at the Ram dealer than the Ford F250 at the Ford dealer. If you're looking for a very basic pickup truck, Ram also has tradesman versions of their Ram 2500 pickup truck. That's something that we don't see to the same extent out of the other manufacturers. They really do a lot to decontent that truck and drive the price as low as possible. On the other hand, we do get a standard 5.7 liter V8 engine in the Ram 2500 rather than the larger V8s that we find in the Silverado and in the F250. The 5.7 liter V8 engine is used in a wide variety of different FCA vehicles from their rear wheel drive sedans to their 1500 series pickup trucks. Now that said, Ram has a 6.4 liter V8 engine that is definitely targeted exactly at the 2500 and 3500 and it produces more power than the gasoline engine that we see under the hood of the Ford. In terms of overall sales volume, Ram is the smaller of the big three pickup trucks in this particular segment, and so they seem to fight back with novel features that we don't find in the competition. For instance, you can get a manual transmission with their turbo diesel engine. That really is quite interesting because it's the only manual transmission available in this segment at this time. Now you should know that if you get the manual transmission, your diesel engine doesn't produce as much power as if you got the automatic transmission, but you can shift your own. Personally, I'm partial to the interior of the Ram pickup trucks. I think I like the styling a little bit better than the F-250 and a little bit better than the Silverado 2500. I also like the way the Cummins turbo diesel engine sounds. The turbo diesel that we find under the hood of the Ram and the Ford pickup trucks are very comparable in terms of overall power output and overall torque output. The air suspension available in the Ram pickup truck line is a very, very interesting option. It's a little bit different depending on which model you get. The Ram 1500 gets a full four corner air suspension that's similar to what we see in the Jeep Grand Cherokee, but the Ram 2500 and Ram 3500 use a very different setup. It's a rear load leveling air suspension only. This is more similar to what we see in General Motors SUV lineup. Suspensions behave best when they're operating within their normal range. So having the vehicle fully unloaded or fully loaded causes the suspension to behave differently. And that's exactly where an air suspension comes in because the air suspension attempts to keep the suspension at a particular ride height so that with the geometry of the suspension can be as optimal as possible. That will affect the handling of the vehicle, the braking ability of the vehicle, especially in emergency maneuvers. It also ends up making the vehicle ride a little bit better because the rear suspension can be designed to have slightly softer springs for a slightly more supple ride and then it'll be able to pump that suspension up in order to accommodate those heavy loads in the rear. Next up we have the Chevy Silverado. It is slightly more expensive than an F-250 starting, but there do seem to be deals available on the lot. As I said before, GM does not seem to be participating in the towing war that we see going on between Ford and Ram. As a result, it seems that GM is really focusing on the meat of this segment. Folks that are towing between 10 and 20,000 pounds, and they're looking for a good heavy duty pickup truck. But that also means that you won't find those extremely high payload or towing capacities in the Silverado line that we find in the others. Next up, we have the Titan XD, which is kind of a tricky entry in this particular segment because it's not really a three quarter ton pickup truck. It's actually more of a 5 eighths ton pickup truck, and Nissan is being particularly upfront about that. Payload and towing capacities are lower in the XD than in comparable F-250s, Ram 2500s, or Silverado 2500s. 
We also see that smaller 5.6 liter V8 standard or a Cummins 5 liter V8 diesel engine that produces 300 horsepower and 555 pound-feet of torque, which sounds impressive until you put that up against the big diesel engines that we see out of the competition. You can think of the Titan XD as the bridge that bridges the gap between your average half-ton pickup truck these days and the insane three-quarter-ton pickup trucks that we're starting to see. Because towing ability tops out at around 13,000 pounds in the Titan XD, but it feels more like the Ram 2500, Silverado 2500, and F250 out on the road than a Ford F-150, Ram 1500, or Silverado 1500. Fuel economy with the gasoline engine is not very different between the Nissan and the rest of the entries in this particular segment, but the diesel option is going to give you better fuel economy than the big diesels that we see out of GM, Ford, and Chrysler. If I were choosing a three-quarter ton or one-ton pickup truck today, it would be a tough choice between the Ford lineup and the Ram lineup. I suspect that I would probably get the Ram 2500 or Ram 3500 pickup truck primarily because of the interior and the rear air suspension. I really love the way the rear air suspension makes the vehicle behave when you have a full bed or when you're putting a lot of tongue weight on the vehicle. That said, if you're looking for the best payload capacity in this segment or if you're looking for a truck for long highway journeys, then the Ford lineup of pickup trucks would be my option. I would especially recommend getting the massaging seats in the Ford pickup truck if you can afford it and make sure you target those higher payload capacities because they can get down there around 2,000 pounds even in the F-250, but when comparably equipped, again, they're going to be higher than the competition. It's relatively easy to find an F-250 with three to 4,000 pounds of payload capacity in the bed. You will, of course, have to give up creature comforts in order to get that 4,000 pound payload capacity. So if you're not willing to do that, then hop on up into the F-350 where you can get that higher payload with the creature comforts as well. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen. Check out the related videos that should be popping up here in just a moment. You can also find us over at facebook.com slash alexandautos. And if you want to support this channel, go to patreon.com slash alexandautos as well. I'll see you next week.